Microsoft have started the process of killing off the original PC version of Minecraft. Actually, they started a while back, but now it's easy to see it happening, and I'm okay with it. I didn't think I would be, but I am. Hello again, I am Blunty. Cross-platform play, super duper graphics, and in-game servers. These are the three big headline calls from Microsoft's Minecraft-related news out of E3, and it's actually pretty cool stuff. But something that will concern many old-school PC Minecrafters, though, is the signal of doom for the original Minecraft. The Minecraft where a huge and passionate community of modders and almost all the big YouTubers and streamers and Let's Players and the like live. The original Minecraft, the Minecraft I have always referred to in my own videos as the real one, is getting a name change. It will now be called Minecraft Java Edition. Meanwhile, the products once known as Minecraft Pocket Edition, Minecraft Windows 10 Edition, Minecraft Switch Edition, and Minecraft Xbox One Edition will all simply come under the singular umbrella of Minecraft. They are now clearly the Prime version. And for some time now, 4J Studios and Mojang and Microsoft have all been working not only to get these versions caught up to the feature set of the PC version, the Java edition, but to get them all on a consistent code base so they could do cool stuff like the new things they talked about at E3 including cross-platform multiplayer. So now, players on Windows 10, and iPhones and iPads, and Android devices, and Xbox One, and Nintendo Switches, even the VR version for the Samsung Gear can all natively and seamlessly inhabit and share the very same multiplayer worlds together. Conspicuously absent from this list is the PlayStation version. And this is not because Microsoft want it that way, to spite their console rivals or something, but this is all Sony refusing to cooperate and let their community share what all the other platforms can enjoy. Sony have offered up some weak-ass excuses, but I'm not even going to repeat them because they're complete garbage, torn apart easier than wet paper. And frankly, if the traditionally very closed off and overprotective folks at Nintendo can come to the table to cooperate on this, even right down to the fact that to get it to work, they have to let Minecraft players on Nintendo Switch sign into their Xbox Live accounts. And well, if Grandpa Nintendo can cope with that, Sony have no excuse to screw over their player base like this by standing in the way. So hopefully, the community pressure already building will force them to play nice. Mojang do claim that the Java edition will continue to be supported, but for how long and in what capacity remains to be seen. That could mean anything from continued full-speed development to just basic updates and patches, all the way down to merely not turning off the servers that register the DRM login checks. Technically, that all falls under the heading of continued support, doesn't it? But I can see the day coming in the not too distant future where the Java edition gets depreciated and left to idle as the player base slowly drains away. As the multi-platform or core edition now becomes the main focus of development, marketing and branding. And all versions receiving this cross-platform update, called the Better Together update, will also be getting a server browser in the main menu. This promises a multiplayer experience beyond the basic and limited Realms service that has been around for a while now, where only up to 8 players can share a single world. The new server browser will let you search a list of bigger, more fully featured servers to play on. In the E3 presentation, we were promised quote-unquote massive community-run servers, Precisely what that means and how this will be handled is yet to be fully detailed. But they're launching, at least, with just four servers called Lifeboat, Mineplex, In PvP, and Cubecraft. Whether or not folks like me can easily run our own customized multiplayer servers for, as an example, multiplayer fun with our Twitch subscribers remains to be seen, but I do hope that's the case. It'd certainly be much simpler than managing a private server for the Java edition is. And finally, we're getting what they call Super Duper Graphics, or if you've ever modded the Java Edition, you'll recognize it as basically a shader pack. But it is a bit more than that too. It's a 4K graphics update as well, at least for systems with the ability to do 4K, the Xbox One X and PC for example. It also has HDR graphics and more broadly improved and fancy lighting and shadows and stuff like prettier water effects. Annoyingly, while they claim that this is coming to, quote, essentially every platform that gets our better together update, what they mean by essentially is that Nintendo Switch owners miss out. As the only platforms they mention specifically by name in the blog post on Minecraft.net is literally everything else. Xbox One, Windows 10, iOS, mobile and VR all get mentioned specifically, Switch doesn't. So that's a bit frustrating as someone who's come to enjoy the Nintendo Switch Edition far more than I had expected. 
I mean, come on, if they can do it on clumsy, old, fragmented to hell Android, I can't imagine it's impossible to get shaders happening on the Switch, for crying out loud. Oh well, maybe Switch players will just get it later or something. Who knows? Shrug. But with all this news, and the dark shadow of a slow death now looming conspicuously over the Java edition, how do you guys feel about this? Now, I personally have only ever lightly modded my PC Minecraft worlds, but I can see how this would feel rather threateningly upsetting to those of you who have long since moved on past vanilla experiences into the heavily modded versions. But regardless of how long Monyang keep updating the Java edition with new features, or if it eventually inevitably falls behind the now prime multi-platform versions, I don't think it's time to panic. You already know that modders themselves will keep the Java edition alive and update as best they can. But for me, I'm already starting to think about moving my main game time on PC in Minecraft to the Windows 10 edition next time I'm ready to start a new world for my Twitch streams or whatever. The cross compatibility with my time on the Switch version is enticing. The ability to share a multiplayer experience with other folk on whatever they happen to be playing on, except PlayStation, is very nice indeed. And if here is where the main efforts of moving the game forward, new features, new updates are happening, well, sooner or later, I'll want to switch away from the version squatted on top of the bloated Java interpreter. So it's probably best to start thinking about it now. Get used to the idea. And with the add-on system that Microsoft introduced at last year's E3, there is at least a clear effort that they want to help satisfy those who want to build or play on modified worlds, pushed on past the basic vanilla experience. And with the marketplace, you can even directly support some of your favorite creators making maps and skins and texture packs. They're even making it so if you buy a DLC pack of maps and skins and textures on one platform, for example, Nintendo Switch, you get to use it on the other ones too. So your Xbox and your PC and your mobile phone, whatever. The transition may be a bit difficult for some, but the future of Minecraft feels bright. And honestly, I never actually expected it to be this bright after this long under the yoke of the Microsoft overlord. So that's, well, that's a pleasant surprise. Thanks for watching. I am Blunting, and I will catch you next time.